Why do we know so little about the human brain? We know more about the bottom of the ocean and the surface of Mars than we know about the human brain. There were four misconceptions about brain health that really put us behind. Number one, fixed brain theory. People used to think that your brain changed during childhood, but then when you were fully mature, it stayed the way it was and any damage that happened to it was permanent. Now we know more and more about neuroplasticity, that the brain is actually highly adaptable and that it can heal from damage. And that's dramatically changed the way that we're looking at treatments for the brain. Number two, the blood brain barrier. The blood brain barrier is a layer of protective tissue that filters out what can come in and out of the brain. Scientists didn't have a great understanding of what did and did not go into the brain. For example, doctors didn't used to think that immune responses which cause inflammation in the rest of the body could cause inflammation in the brain because cytokines cannot get through the blood brain barrier. But we know now that just because they can't get through doesn't mean that there isn't also an inflammatory response within the brain. Before people didn't pay much attention to inflammation on the brain and now we've learned that if you pump cytokines into otherwise healthy people, you can also uh, stimulate feelings of despair and sadness. Number three, dualism. This became an idea when doctors decided to separate mood and emotions from the physical. So psychiatrists were in one field, neurologists are in the other, and never the twain shall meet. We're realizing more and more how much the body affects the brain. For example, gut health, inflammation, like I mentioned, hormones and that poor physical health can cause poor mental health. They're all intertwined. Number four was the idea that depression is caused by a neurotransmitter imbalance or a chemical imbalance. The way this came about is doctors found out on accident that certain medications can change people's moods, and they discovered that it was most likely because the medications were increasing people's neurotransmitters. But they falsely assumed that the only reason the increase in neurotransmitters would be so helpful would be if there was an insufficient amount of these neurotransmitters in the first place. There was never any proof that this was the case. There are no biomarkers for neurotransmitters. Increasing the neurotransmitters that are responsible for improving mood works on neurotypical people who don't have mental health problems. For example, doing activities that increase dopamine is going to make anybody happy. It doesn't mean that they didn't have enough dopamine in the first place. Now we know that depression can be caused by a multitude of different things, such as nutritional deficiencies like iron or hormonal imbalances like menopause or brain injuries. Now that these misconceptions are more or less going away in mainstream medicine, we're making a lot more progress in mental health care. It does make me wonder, though, how many things we believe now are going to end up being misconceptions 10, 20, 30 years from now. It's important to keep an open mind.